hi guys today we are making one of the most legendary and least realistic <laughs> recipes from the Nancy Drew game universe which is JJ Lee's mint chocolate chip cookies now why I say least realistic is because everyone who's tried to make these cookies has realized at one point or another that in real life you don't get these amazing mint chocolate chip cookies that have the edges that cup up like they have to in the game or else Nancy's in trouble. We think we figured out a way to make that happen. Want to find out how to do it? Let's get to it. You ready to start? First things first, you're going to need three cubes of butter. We're following the recipe exactly the first time around. Our amounts may or may not need tweaking. We're going to find out. So for three cubes of butter, what it looks like looking at a picture is that they're probably like two tablespoon size cubes. So we're going to put six tablespoons of room temperature butter in a bowl. In addition to our butter, we're going to add in our sugars. We have one cup of regular white sugar and then a half cup of dark brown sugar. Now just like Nancy Drew and JJ Ling, I don't have dark brown sugar in the house today. So we're gonna go in game style and do an extra half cup of white sugar and one teaspoon of molasses. Then you wanna beat the sugar and the flour together. In addition to this, you want to add three eggs. One teaspoon of vanilla. One quarter teaspoon of salt. And a half teaspoon of baking soda. You're also going to want to take one sprig of fresh mint and chop that up nice and small. Recipe says one sprig, but looks like Nancy does about more like this, which is like four stems. Once you have those ingredients mixed in, you're going to want to add two and one quarter cups of flour. Now you're going to stir this until everything's just blended and then you're going to add in your chocolate chips after that. And once your chocolate chips are in, your batter is ready to go. You're going to put them on an ungreased cookie sheet and have your oven preheated to 350. And we're just doing a little bit over a tablespoon per cookie, but you can make these as big as you want personally. We're ready to go. In the oven at 350 for about 12 minutes. So now, time for the top secret how to get those curved edges. Fingers crossed that we can make this work. What we're doing is we're taking our inspiration from another classic French cookie. I would like to say that this is probably how her interactive got inspired, but let's be honest, they might have just decided that it was cool to make cookies that crawled up in game. Either way, we are borrowing a method from Tweedle Cookies where once they're baked, you take them out of the oven and as soon as they're done while they're still hot, you take them off with a spatula and put them across something that's curved and let them cool into that shape. Now what we're going to try, we're going to collect 
some things with curved surfaces. We have a small set of coasters, but we're also gonna try some small bowls and see what works best. And as soon as we take these cookies out of the oven, we're gonna take them with the spatula and put them in these things, something that's about the same size as the cookie, but that forces the edges up. Let's find out if it works. So go ahead, assemble some curved items, and we'll meet right back here in 12 minutes. It's We're time. Back. Ready? Ready? I'm gonna grab some Freddy, Freddy, Freddy. Of course. Ready, ready, ready. Let the cookies out of the oven. Let's see if our method works. So I don't think this batch is actually big enough to get them to shape right because they're not really reaching the edges of our thing. So we're gonna take this pan, set them aside. We've still got enough batter left to do at least one or two more trays. We're gonna set these aside and start a next batch. We're gonna make them larger and we'll see how it goes. There we so go. these are almost twice the size of our previous batch. Again, we'll have them in there for 12 minutes and we'll be back in another 12. Let's see if they came out right this time. Yay! So this time we went a little bit overboard with the size. Wow. But let's see how this goes. All right, we're gonna try two cookies a piece in three different ways. First way, we're gonna drape two upside down Maybe we need on the base of these. Yeah, I think this is, this is looking really promising. That's kind of like looking like, like the cookie, honestly. So. All right, we're gonna let these cool for a good 10 minutes so that they keep their shape, and while that finishes, we'll just finish baking the last bit of the batter and I we'll think be right we should back. Put these in. Last batch. Last batch. Let's see if we've gotten better at this. These better be perfect. Really, the only thing is figuring out how to get the size of your cookies about perfect, mm -hmm. and getting them to fall in the bowl correctly. Okay, so we've had mixed success. We're definitely getting better at it the more that we make. Mm -hmm. They still don't look exactly like in-game, but they look pretty close. Look at those. Look at those lifted edges. We have some nice cupped little shapes. So the way that we achieved this one, you wanna grab the bowl we used? I do. We used these little one cup size glass containers. This was about one and a half to two tablespoons of dough per cookie. And that seemed to work the best for us. We did this try better than everything else. We did try a couple flipped upside down on top of a mug. Not great. Not Let really me show you how those turned out. out. They just look sad. All that I got for us was a cookie with a dent in it. Ah, eh, not great. But all the ones that we did in these little bowls over here, they look like cookie bowls. If you, if you can get the size of your cookie just right, so it's just slightly bigger than these little bowls here, then you can get just the perfect amount of just a little bit of rim. Mm -hmm. It's gonna take some practice, but it is doable. So, do you think we achieved our goal today of managing the curled edge mint chocolate I chip think cookies? We've, we've done more than everyone Have else. we created history making it happen in real life? We have. We are Nancy. We are Nancy. Ready to try one? I am. Mm -hmm. So the really nice thing that I noticed right away is that this is a very refreshing mint flavor, but it's not a very strong mint flavor. Mm -hmm. If you like a very strong mint chocolate flavor in your cookies, you can definitely do more mint. But this is like the perfect amount mm -hmm. for me. I'm not a huge She's not crazy about mint chocolate. I like mint chocolate and this is still about the perfect amount for me. So I think, yeah, probably about four stems of mint and you can play with that. If you don't like heart mint hardly at all, cut that down to about half and it'll be just a little hint of it in there. But this is really a really nice, light, refreshing sort of balance to it. Yeah. And the texture of these is really too, really good also considering that this is uses a lot more eggs than I usually use for really any cookie recipe. But it's got that nice soft, but not too flowery level. They're like really light. 
The Wonka Wonka cookies were so heavy, you couldn't even eat mm -hmm. like two of them. Like these are sweet, but I feel like I could eat a few of these without feeling sick from too much sugar for sure. JJ, I congratulate you on an excellent cookie recipe. And this is where we differ from, from Nancy. Instead of leaving these for JJ when she gets back to eat so she can keep her job and all that. Sorry, these are just too good to share or to save for you. <laughs> Make you another batch. So that's it for today. We'll be back again with another recipe yet to be determined. I'm not really sure what recipe we're gonna do at this point. So we'll all find out together. Until then, enjoy your amazing Au cookies. Au revoir. And yes, I would trek across Paris looking for fresh mint to make these to answer the unasked question that nobody wanted to know. <laughs> Bye guys. Bye.